In my Terraforming Mars video, I went over what terraforming is, a way of transforming an inhospitable planet into one we could live on, why we might terraform, uh, natural disasters, nuclear war, overpopulation, etc, and when we could terraform, I don't know. But more specifically, I focused on how we could terraform Mars. But in many respects, Venus is actually a much more preferable planet for colonization. Yeah, it has the downside of being hot enough to melt lead, uh, no liquid water on the surface, and sometimes it rains sulfuric acid from the sky. But it's not all that bad. What is Venus like as a planet? Venus is often called Earth's sister planet, as it has a mass and diameter just less than Earth's. Venus's gravity is 0.9g compared to Earth's 1g. However, a single Venusian year is 224.7 Earth days, while a single Venusian day is 243 days. That means that a single rotation is longer than an entire trip around the Sun. Venus also randomly rotates in the opposite direction to every other planet in the solar system. Venus is shrouded in a thick atmosphere that's 96.5% carbon dioxide, with the remaining 3.5% being mostly nitrogen. A thick blanket of sulfur dioxide clouds reflects almost 90% of the sunlight that reaches it, while the surface pressure on Venus is an enormous 92 bar, compared to Earth's 1 bar. Despite Mercury being closer to the Sun, Venus is actually the hottest planet in the solar system due to the greenhouse effect trapping heat from the Sun, with a mean surface temperature of 735 degrees Kelvin, or 462 degrees Celsius. How would we terraform? Firstly, we need to drastically cool Venus down. This requires removing basically all of its atmosphere, which creates the super greenhouse effect. The best way to do this would probably be with a massive sunshade, twice the diameter of Venus, constructed in space and positioned in Venus's Lagrange point, which is a location near Venus where the planet's gravity and the sun's gravity allow an object to maintain a stable position. Basically, this would allow the solar shade to orbit between the sun and Venus without flying off into space. The sunshade would be the largest object ever built by humans. However, constructing it in space has a lot of advantages. We could move a few metal-rich asteroids into position and then send a bunch of construction robots over to strip mine and convert it into the sunshade. Once the sunshade is built, Venus should begin cooling down. This takes place in five stages. Firstly, the temperature plummets to 304 degrees Kelvin in just 58 years. This is the critical point of CO2, meaning that in the second stage, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere rains from the sky at a constant temperature of about 220 degrees Kelvin. 27 years later, the pressure has fallen to CO2's critical pressure, after which stage three begins. Temperature and pressure begin falling together. After the great rain, over 88 bars of Venus's 92 bar atmosphere will have rained out of the sky and formed oceans in the planet's lowlands. After 94 years of this rain, the triple point of CO2 is reached, triggering the fourth stage. The oceans freeze. This takes 17 years to complete, while the remaining CO2 snows out of the atmosphere in just 9 years. By stage 5, 200 years of cooling has gone by. All of Venus's atmospheric CO2 is now on the ground in the form of glaciers, leaving just a 3 bar atmosphere of nitrogen. We now have to deal with the CO2 glaciers. We could insulate them using foamed rock, or maybe a better idea would be to move all of the dry ice to the poles. So let's do that. Because of Venus's tiny axial tilt of 2.64 degrees, it would be possible to position the ice such that it was always in the shade and never melted. We can now set up factories to convert the CO2 into solid carbon and oxygen. The former would be turned into building materials for the habitats, and the latter would just be pumped straight into the atmosphere. Okay, after what seems like two centuries, we have a planet we can work with. Now it needs an ocean. Well, we could bombard Venus with icy comets, we'd need a hell of a lot of them. Instead, we'll move several of Saturn's moons into Venus's orbit, break them up, and send the icy chunks towards the planet. We do this by attaching deuterium helium 3 fusion rockets to the ice moons Epimetheus, Janus, Pandora, Prometheus, and Mimas to propel them towards Venus. The ice moons would take almost six years to get there, but once they arrived, we could begin dismantling them, processing and refining the water ice and throwing the projectiles at Venus, making sure to aim them at the basin of the planet and avoid the CO2 glaciers. Venus now has oceans. Unfortunately, as I mentioned before, Venus both spins incredibly slowly and backwards, both of which are problems for future settlers. We could try to spin Venus up, but the amount of power that would require makes it unfeasible. So instead, we'll just make sure that the sunshade is slatted and add a constellation of selectors on the opposite side of Venus. Now we'll just make sure that the sunshade is set to be open 12 hours and closed 12 hours and set a day-night cycle. Finally, we can begin introducing life. The atmosphere is basically just nitrogen, so we'd introduce nitrogen-fixing bacteria into the soil and eventually plant legumes in order to turn nitrogen in the air into biologically available compounds. They'd release oxygen through photosynthesis, and if they were genetically engineered to reproduce quickly and fix nitrogen efficiently, that would really speed things up. We'd be able to walk on the surface before we had a breathable atmosphere, on a balmy planet with good air pressure. Similarly to Mars, we'd build towns and cities and eventually human colonists would breathe the air. 
of a terraformed Venus.